Thank you very much for the introduction. Mm. Like this, it's okay. okay. Um, yeah, I'm Yoichi Mine. Um, Today, um, this event is the last of a series of launch. Um, actually, the last Monday, uh, we had one in Addis Ababa, attended by uh, quite a number of African diplomats. And, and also yesterday, um, we had uh, another one in Brussels, um, where um, quite a many um, European Union stakeholders attended the uh, launch event. So I'm, I, I'm very glad and I feel honored um, to finish um, here at the ODI. So thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for the uh, Francis uh, for attending this event. So I really appreciate your help um, during the uh, research project. So um, let me first um, give a brief outline of this book. So the um, actually this research project started in 2008. So um, this was born out of um, quite important um, international conference at the uh, Wilton Park um, held in 2007, um, organized jointly by JICA and the UNDP. So, then, so um, 20 years after the, the end of the Cold War, the Africa still, you know, in Africa still, you know, we have a lot of violent conflicts. And so, but uh, now um, the uh, growth is uh, given um, thanks to the, um, you know, the uh, robust demand for African natural resources in East Asian countries, especially China. So the, in the past decade, um, more or less a 5% national, you know, some on, on average, uh, the uh, growth rate has been achieved in Africa. But the growth is given, um, but the problem is the, uh, you know, quality of uh, growth. So um, we have a lot of polarization, you know, some um, the rich and so grow, um, resource rich countries and regions and resource poor um, countries and regions. So the inclusiveness and also the inequalities is quite uh, becoming a critical issue um, in the preventing violent conflict in Africa. So the, um, in 2008, um, the JICA Research Institute um, established, uh, launched a new uh, research project on preventing violent conflict in Africa. So the, um, we had advisors and global advisors. Uh, the one is Professor Francis Stewart from um, Oxford, um, who is here. And Sakiko Fukudapar, um, the, he, she was the, uh, uh, the head of the Human Development Resource uh, Re Report Office at the UNDP for 10 years, and now the teaching at the new school at New York. And also uh, Professor Tandika Mukandawile, and quite respected Africanist, and now teaching at the London School of Economics. So then um, in order to understand um, the nature of the challenges of conflict prevention, uh, we have combined uh, three perspectives. Um, so the one is horizontal inequalities. So here at the ODI, maybe I don't have to elaborate this perspective. I think that many of you already know about this um, concept and um, perspective. So horizontal inequalities is becoming, I think, more and more relevant to um, contemporary Africa. So the um, um, the horizontal inequalities (HIs) um, are not the uh, economic inequalities between uh, individuals, but uh, multidimensional inequalities. Um, multidimensional inequalities, economic, not only economic, but also social, political, and cultural status um, inequalities. Um, between um, groups rather than individuals. So um, when those horizontal inequalities occur in all dimensions simultaneously and worsening and all in all dimensions at the same time, a violent conflict is very, very likely. So um, the after the uh, completion of research project, uh, now JICA um, is uh, trying to incorporate this um, intergroup inequality perspective into the uh, country analysis of the Anjaika's um, daily operation. So, and this uh, perspective is the uh, basis of the um, whole research project. So this is the first one. And the second one is um, subjective perception of horizontal inequalities. So the um, subjective perceptions of, in of inequalities are made you know, significantly differ uh, from the um, objective um, state of inequalities. So, 
um, you can see the people um, take actions not because of statistical data um, on inequalities of which they might not be aware, um, but because of injustice they perceive. So, the our research question is uh, therefore, uh, what factors um, contribute uh, to this subjective distortion of the um, perception of? Um, objective inequalities. So to answer this question, so um, we JICA um, um, implemented um, perception surveys in um, nine African countries, uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. So uh, nearly 4,000 samples. So, so this is a second pers perspective. And the third um, is a choice of institutions. Um, so, the institutional choice, and you know, some countries have um, power dispersing uh, institutions um, characterized by power sharing and decentralization, and some other set, um, another set of countries have adopted power concentrating regime um, characterized by majoritarian system and concent um, concentration of power. So both can be democratic. So power dispersing um, institutions um, com is compatible with the um, you know, consensus seeking kind of accommodative, accommodative politics. And power concentrating regime is supposed to be compatible with uh, more you know, integration, the nation building. So, so um, our research question is so what kind of which arrangements are more effective in preventing violent conflict in Africa? So this is the, um, our research question. So the but the um, the important point is that the um, those uh, PDPC institutions are defined only in, in informal um, you know in terms of um, formal institutions. So we have to investigate more into the um, informal um, institutions and conventions. So this is also important. And the uh, next um, is um, this illustration um, is the, our hypothesis. So. The starting point is political institutions and policy making. So the uh, some kind of the modality of uh, political representation and policies work on socioeconomic horizontal inequalities, um, subjective and, and um, objective and material horizontal inequalities. So and uh, both the quality of political representation and policies and the quality of um, the uh, living conditions of own groups are perceived um, to be just or unjust um, by ordinary people, as well as um, policy um, political actors. So um, this subjective perception then uh, um, lead to this you know, stability or instability of society through uh, group mobilization. And then, so the conflict take place, uh, violent or not, and this conflict leads to the, uh, the adoption of another, you know, set of political institutions. So, this kind of causes, you know, some cycle is the uh, our um, research hypothesis. So, and then this map shows um, our choice of um, country case studies. So. You can see um, we have um, four country pairs. So um, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Rwanda, Burundi, and um, um, Tanzania, Uganda, and South Africa, Zimbabwe. So um, in each pair, um, the one is um, relatively stable, another is relatively unstable. And um, th these you know, two countries, um, adopted um, quite contrasting uh, political institutions. So um, this is a case study of country twins, um, country pairs. So and um, we also added two um, single country case studies. And one is um, Nigeria, another is um, Kenya. So um, these countries are relatively big, um, heterogeneous countries. So we wanted to trace the history of um, institution building um, to contain ethnic conflict. So, okay, then um, we have, um, well, conducted um, research project. Okay, so this is the um, um, 
picture, a cover picture. It's quite um, interesting and <laughs> enigmatic, and we, the editors, have uh, decided a little bit about the interpretation of this cover picture. It's actually the uh, maybe the lady uh, symbolized maybe uh, you know peace and maybe prosperity, and the blue sky, the peace, and maybe the other side of the hill in the future, in the peaceful future. And you can see the uh, lady is holding cell phone on the light hand, and there are two um, boys, uh, maybe peacemaker and war maker, <laughs> when they grown up. I, I, I know, just, just my you know, interpretation, but anyway, it's a good, quite a beautiful picture taken in Uganda. So. Anyway, so um, so the most important thing is please um, buy this book, and the, uh, also the, you can download it you know, from the uh, Amazon <laughs> uh, as a Kindle. Okay. Anyway, so um, let me now um, briefly um, um, okay um, show you. Yeah, this is the contents of book, and um, from chapter one to chapter ten. And the chapter two is a classification of institution the from, from three to eight um, country case studies and the nine. Um, this is quite interesting, um, the uh, polymetric analysis of perceptions. And the uh, last one, chapter 10, um, chiefly drafted by the Professor Francis Stewart. Uh, this is a conclusion and policy recommendations. And uh, now the uh, chapter one. So uh, chapter one uh, presents the overall motivation of our research. So we confirmed the research questions and inequalities, perceptions, and the uh, institutions I explained. And also um, we have provided literature review on horizontal inequalities and violent conflict. So and the second chapter uh, classifies the uh, power dispersing and power concentrating institutions. And our hypothesis is um, power dispersing institution <coughs> may be more effective in preventing violent conflict. So, um, but however, informal values and institutions um, should be taken into account. So that's why um, the case studies uh, follow. <coughs> the um, chapter three um, is about twin countries, uh, Jumu, um, the uh, Rwanda and Burundi. Um, those countries share um, quite uh, similar ethnic configurations, so relatively uh, rich minority Tutsi and um, majority Hutu. Okay. So, but the uh, Rwanda and Burundi um, adopted quite contrasting institutions, uh, Rwanda power concentrating and Burundi um, exemplary power sharing um, institutions and formally and ad hoc nature. Anyway, so these um, the choice of institutions uh, um, was largely conditioned by the uh, shape of kingdom in the pre-colonial time, but the uh, the more decisive was the uh, recent political development in Rwanda. Uh, the military victory of Tutsi-led forces after the genocide um, led to the adoption of power concentration regime. And on the other hand, in Burundi, um, you know, the military state um, stalemate, um, you know, uh, brought to the uh, power sharing uh, regime. Um, but um, both countries are politically stable in different ways. So the lesson of this chapter is the institutional choice um, is often determined by the uh, modalities of war ending. Okay. So, oh, okay. <laughs> Let me uh, make it quick. And that's uh, chapter four, and by um, Professor Langa, as discusses the um, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, uh, the, um, the they share the same kind of similar social ethnic configuration: the uh, Christian South and um, largely Muslim North. So the in Ghana, the legacy of um, Kwame Nkrumah um, is quite still quite um, effective. Um, they paid equal attention to various ethnic groups. Um, but in Cote d'Ivoire, um, the, uh, the we witnessed the spread of ethno-nationalism. So the lesson is the significance of leadership quality and an informal power sharing, a culture, a culture of sharing power. Okay. So the chapter five, uh, the um, actually this is my chapter. Um, the um, those two countries, South Africa and Zimbabwe, share some history of European settlement and the history of racism. Um, but in, in, in talking about the African society in Zimbabwe, there is a, you know, some quite um, um, 
um, okay, Ndebere, a uh, minority in Ndebere and the majority <laughs> Shona, um, some you know, ethnic problem and division. In South Africa, um, but in South Africa, I, I don't have to um, you know, say much about this. The, um, Nelson Mandela passed away, um, but he was the um, first president, um, the democratic um, the elected uh, president in South Africa. So in 1994, um, the country has adopted ad hoc power sharing and semi-federalism and is generally stable. In Zimbabwe, um, but the, um, in, in um, 2008, after the violent election, um, they um, you know, um, reached an agreement on ad hoc power sharing um, with the uh, mediation of SADC, um, and now returning to um, majoritarian uh, power concentrating kind of politics again. So the uh, lesson uh, of this chapter is the significance of electoral system and ad hoc power sharing in avoiding the escalation of violence, at least in the short term. Okay. And the chapter six is about um, Uganda and Tanzania. So the, um, those two countries also um, you know, have some similarity and difference. So the, um, um, the mainland um, Tanzania is um, ethnically uh, relatively homogeneous, but they do have Zanzibar um, wanted to uh, have <coughs> autonomy. And but in Uganda, um, they have um, there are several ethnic poles. Oh, sorry, um, yeah, this one. Oh, sorry, um, in Uganda, ethnic poles and the uh, Buganda Kingdom uh, historically um, called for federalism. So, but the, um, in Tanzania, um, conflict contained through federal arrangements between mainland Tanzania and Zanzibar. And in Uganda, um, grievances of northerners and Baganda caused um, by, uh, is uh, caused and fermented uh, by power concentration in the Museveni um, government. So the lesson is a similar political institution. For example, decentralization, um, this is um, quite common in those two countries, uh, may function quite differently in um, different political um, context. Okay. So the uh, chapter seven. Chapter seven is the, uh, about the, the um, Nigeria, uh, Kenya. Um, the trace is the history of uh, ethnic conflict and institution building. So the after independence in Nigeria, uh, in Kenya, uh, the president favored the own ethnic groups. And the, but in 2007, there was the uh, worst ethnic um, election-related violence. So, but the, after this conflict, um, the country adopted a new con uh, constitution. Okay, so with uh, power dispersing uh, devices in 2010. So the lesson is, okay, um, the effectiveness of democratic democratic constitution is now implemented gradually. So the chapter eight is about um, Nigeria. So the, um, there are asymmetric power relations and political ascendancy and better social service in the northern Muslim area. Um, in contrast, um, re relative economic prosperity in the southern Christian area. Okay, but after the Biafra civil war, um, okay, and in Nigeria has developed a um, federal nation uh, combining elements of power dispersion and concentration. So the, uh, the lesson, the, uh, what is important is institutional um, innovation. So the, uh, the country has developed the uh, hybrid system uh, gradually in the past 40 years and uh, avoiding the uh, major violent conflict. And chapter nine, um, I think the Professor Stewart will um, talk a little bit about um, the, the finding from this chapter. Um, which, uh, the chapter nine is polymetric analysis of ethnic perception in five um, African countries. So in those countries, um, we confirmed uh, the presence of objective material horizontal inequalities. Um, but however, there is also the visible incongruity between objective and subjective um, inequalities. So so the, our findings is about um, some cross-dimensional contamination of horizontal inequalities. So the tendency of economically inferior groups uh, to feel less inferior when the same groups feel they are politically empowered. Okay. So the last chapter, um, the, the evaluation of nine chapters and the policy implications. So the um, horizontal inequalities are root causes of violent conflict. And based on this, um, examining um, relationships between socioeconomic and political horizontal inequalities, um, you know, we have confirmed that the um, 
subjective distortion of political horizontal inequalities um, are largely occasioned by political horizontal inequalities. So the, um, the stability instability explained in the matrix of political institutions and we also confirmed advantage of um, sustainable power sharing and decentralization, um, supplemented by, um, powerfully supplemented by informal um, po power sharing and the value of sharing power. Okay, so the, um, based on the findings of um, all these um, book chapters and especially the uh, discussion of chapter 10, um, JICA has released um, policy recommendation, uh, policy brief number, number eight. So if you are interested, um, this policy brief is downloadable from the uh, JICA uh, website. Okay, a little bit long, uh, sorry, okay. but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's all, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Professor Min, and sorry to rush it. Um, and it was, but it was very useful to have the overview of the whole book, um, so that now we can appreciate uh, in the, in the context uh, what Professor Stewart is about to tell us a little bit more about some of the specific findings around the objective and the subjective perception-based data. Please. 